he was killed tragically, right? A drive-by shooting? Yes. Never solved? Unsolved. Do you think it was a purposeful drive-by shooting or an accidental drive-by shooting? Uh, we... Or, and we, no idea? We absolutely believe it was purposeful. Do you have um, any suspect? The back-to-back -back deaths of Tupac and Notorious Big remain two of music's most infamous crimes. Neither case has been officially solved, and as of now, both remain at a complete standstill. Yet, during a recent interview with HuffPost Live, Faith Evans, Biggie's wife at the time, hopes that will change, stating she wants the investigation reopened. Somewhat, fans believe Faith Evans may be accusing LAPD of being guilty of Biggie's untimely demise. Keep watching to know more. While the world seems to have moved on from Biggie's death, the rapper's ex-wife, Faith Evans may not be ready to move on. The singer has shared that she still can't wrap her head around the untimely demise of her lost lover and, of course, the circumstances surrounding the demise of the rapper have been nothing but confusing. Recently, the hip-hop world marked the 25th anniversary of Biggie Small's mysterious murder in 1997 at the age of 24. And to commemorate the iconic late rapper, people spoke to Evans about her favorite memories with him and the legacy he left behind. Recalling the day she learned the news and the impact it had on her, the singer, 48, says it was crushing. Although we were separated, we had a five-month-old baby, she says. And it was obviously so unexpected. We didn't know or expect that to happen. We definitely felt like, okay, come back home. Just because of all the little weird things that were being whispered and things that happened prior to his death. She continued, once I was able to not think gray all the time, I was definitely thankful that I was in lad that weekend, but to even be able to come into the hospital. Of course, I would have loved to have seen him and just wanted to hold his hand. I literally was hoping and thinking, if I go in there and talk to him, he's going to be okay. Since then, however, Evans remarried and had two sons Josh and Ryder in addition to CJ and Chena, her firstborn whom she shares with Kiama Griffin. Despite moving on, however, the I'll be missing you singer says, I remember big. Every day, I walk down my stairs and there's a portrait that someone gave me of him up in the top of the foyer. Big is a huge part of this house, she says of the hypnotized rapper, who was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2020. He's one of the reasons that I am able to be here, to be quite honest, and live here, and my son. Evans commented, moreover, although CJ was only five months old when Biggie died, Evans recalls her son growing up and seeing much of his dad in him. It's crazy, she says, like the way that Big had allergies and CJ does as well, but there was a certain way he rubs his nose, and CJ has been doing that. That's, I wouldn't say spooky, but to me it's a more spiritual thing. That is totally his dad's spirit right there. To remember him, Evans gets together with the Junior Mafia, a New York-based hip-hop group founded and mentored by Biggie, and at times, and they'll all recall stories with the Big Popper rapper. All we do throughout the night is tell Big jokes. We tell stories and say, remember this time. It may be the same 30 jokes, over and over and over, or situations, but it just never gets old. It's actually a joy just to know that that's how we felt about him. Everybody, she says of the group, which disbanded shortly after Biggie's death. There's not many people, I don't know of any, that really don't have a great feeling about him or a funny story about him. Also, she recalled a humorous story of her own with the late rapper, a time they went to a bodega in Brooklyn to pick up marijuana shortly before the store was raided. Vegas was really lazy, Evans says. He wouldn't get out of the car to go into the store to get the weed. So I go in, and it just so happens they were getting raided. I was taking a long time. And it's not like he got out the car to come and check and see what happened, she recounts. It was about an hour, and I came back all frazzled, and I'm like, why you didn't come check on me? He's like, no, I'm not getting out the car, what are you talking about? He was like, well, where the weed at? Not, are you okay? But, where's the weed? She says as she bursts out laughing. Clearly, the memories of Biggie will never be forgotten. As far as that inner circle, however, Evans says they've grown probably even closer since his passing. And to the people that didn't know him, Evans wants to make sure Biggie is remembered for who he really was. The person behind these rhymes, which could be so gritty and sometimes harsh and sometimes explicit, he was occasionally all of those things. But for the most part, he was just a really cool, lovable, funny person that most people love being around. Reflecting on where he would be now, Evans says he definitely would have done more albums and had a couple more artists. She also says she would have worked with him on her 2017 album, The King and I. I totally feel like he would be the mogul that he wanted to become right now, she says. He would have had a restaurant chain or something. At the end of the day, Evans also assures that, despite whatever, even after Big, and I separated, even after he had a girlfriend or I found out about this one or that one, he always still depended on me for something or another, trust me, even up until his passing, to be quite honest. He knew he could, he knew he could depend on me. But what's disturbing is how the LAPD may have been dishonest and somewhat shady about the investigation of Biggie's demise. The only way you can look at it is tragic. Tragic and senseless, Evans said, 
However, she doesn't believe in one of long-standing conspiracy theories about the case, the fact that the East Coast versus West Coast beef was to blame for Biggie's death. It's a little deeper than that. I think all the things that came with it definitely added to the hype of things. The whole media element and people being able to say what they think and not be accurate. Instead, she believes the LAPD knows who the true culprit is. We know he was murdered, but we believe that the LAPD knows who's responsible. She said, that's what we believe. Authorities, you know, um, his mom and I have been, you know, it's been years since we actually were in a, a courtroom. But, you know, there was a time when we spent a lot of time, a lot of dollars, um, you know, just kind of trying to fight, or not even, fight for justice, pretty much, and hoping that the authorities would bring someone to, you know, to responsibility. And after a while, you realize that that's probably not going to happen. Although we do believe they know what happened. We believe we know what happened. Let's see if the fans agree. A fan wrote, not so sure LAPD can be trusted at all. Wasn't Tupac shot and killed in Vegas dot 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 so LAPD was investigating it why? Another fan added, LAPD killed Biggie and covered it up. Ain't putting nothing past them. Well, it turns out that fans haven't forgotten about Biggie quite yet and for sure, everyone wants answers. Meanwhile, a detective familiar with the investigation recently made the headlines by revealing some details on Biggie's demise. A former LAPD detective who worked on the Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur murder cases says he knows who killed the two rap icons. Well, ex-officer Greg Kading was assigned to the Robbery Homicide Division and claims he can put an end to the rumors. As for who killed Biggie Smalls, Greg says Biggie was killed by an associate of Suge Knight. He hired a guy named Pucci to track down Biggie at the Peterson Auto Museum in March of 1997 and wait for him outside and he pulled alongside and shot either side of the car killing Biggie. Pucci was a blood gang member from Compton, well known to Suge Knight, well known to those in Suge Knight's circle. Biggie was killed by an associate of Suge Knight's. He hired a guy named Pucci to track down Biggie at the Peterson Auto Museum in March of 1997 and wait for him outside and he pulled alongside and shot him to the side of the car and kill, killing Biggie. Real sound clip, 523-540. While there are several speculations about who the true culprit is, Faith Evans is hoping she gets clarification from a credible source and truly, fans are waiting too. See you next time for more entertainment.